Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we continue our journey with the D76 type developers. Today's formula is the ADOX MQ Borax developer formula, which is closely related to the ASA testing developers that they used for many years to find the ISO of black and white films. The advantages of this developer over the D76 is sharpness, better tonality, I believe, in the mid-range, and not so fast to burn out the highlights, a slower rise in contrast with longer development times. It's a lovely developer. Let's see how to make it. So ADOX MQ Borox, similar to D76, but there's some important attribute differences that we need to talk about. We start off with the metal. The metal is two grams per liter. It's the same as D76. But then moving on to the sodium sulfite, we only have 80 grams per liter in this formula. And that's an important thing. Barry Thornton described reducing the sulfite level from a 100 to 80 grams per liter as a method of improving the sharpness of the developer. It's a sweet spot where the sulfite does less replating of silver on the grain of the film and therefore keeps a sharper grain and a sharper developer. So we're expecting more sharpness out of the MQ Borox formula. Next is Borox. Um, here in my list, here, it's not the next one to go in, but Borox has got four grams per liter, uh, slightly higher than D76 actually. Uh, hydroquinone, four grams per liter, slightly less than D76. And this actually creates a lower contrast rise with this developer. So it's a bit safer for your highlights. It doesn't burn them out as quickly as D76 will with slight overdevelopment. After the hydroquinone, here I have my potassium bromide. And this is another thing that is not in D76. Potassium bromide at 0.5 of a gram per liter will reduce the fog slightly in the film, but also, and Crawley said this, and I wish I could find where he said it, but I'm sure I've read that Crawley acknowledged that bromide is important in developers for increasing sharpness. And that's very interesting that they used it in this MQ Borox formula. It's a very good formula for replenishment. I replenish with this formula, or ANSCO 17, which is a similar formula to this one, um, a lot. It's a lovely developer for replenishment. If you like the D76 type of developer and you want to replenish it. And I know that D76 has its own replenisher, but I just prefer this formula. It's a sharper formula and I believe has a better tonality than D76. But we're going to see that when I develop a film with it. So I'm going to now make this developer up. I'm going to make 500 milliliters. I have hot water up to 350 mil and I'm going to add these in the same order as I had D76. Let's go ahead and do that. And of course, the first thing I need to do is add a pinch of the sodium sulfite so as not to oxidize the metal. Dissolve that in. It's a great antioxidant. And that's it dissolved. And then we'll add our metal. Get that dissolved in. Very good. And then we'll add the rest of the sulfite. To make the 500 milliliters, I've halved the amounts I've told you for one liter. It's a very handy way of making a developer up using just half. Another advantage in making your own developers at home. Next, we'll add the hydroquinone. It 
If you want timings for your particular personal film with the MQ Borax formula, it's about 10 to 20% longer than D76. That will get you right in the ballpark. That's dissolved. Next is the borax. Lovely. And now finally the potassium bromide. Okay. Now I'll make this up to 500 milliliters and I'm ready to develop my film. So here we have our MQ Borox negative on the right hand side and last week's D76 negative on the left. The MQ Borox is a HP5 negative, same as the D76, and I've processed it in stock solution at 20 centigrade for eight minutes. Straight away, there's a contrast difference between the two negatives, and I've got to be careful looking at this because that will throw me out a little bit. The right-hand negative has a darker background, so it immediately shows that different contrast. However, I think you'd agree that there's a little bit of a glow to the right-hand negative. There is a higher contrast in the flower, and I think this is something that MQ Borax and Ansco 17 bring to the table. A little bit of that rodinal look, if you like. Let's zoom in and just take a look at the grain. The grain is similar. Um, it's not bad. It's quite acceptable, I think. Uh, this is a 35 millimeter negative, so I'm expecting to see grain, and it's sharp. There's no doubt that that is sharp. There's a nice sharpness. Almost a little bit of acuteness. You can see a spider's web here, so its micro contrast is also very good. Um, but there's more of a glow. The lighting was similar, it's, they're both in full sun. Um, and look at the little guys. Now you can definitely see the wing better on this little guy here. Um, although, no, no, I take that back, I, th I think it's about the same. I think it's about the same. So the bottom line I think here is we've got a bit of a glow from the MQ Borax, slightly higher contrast. It's sharp, slightly sharper, and the grain is similar. Not a lot more grain. I was expecting to see more grain in a HP 535 millimeter negative from the MQ Borax, but I'm not. Um, they're both nicely nuanced in the mid-tones. And I can't really say that the MQ Borax is a lot better. It's not. It's similar. A very nice developer. And I think a good result. I like this. I like it's a little punchier. I like that glow. Let's have a look, see how it prints. So here is the negative printed. And again, as last week, it's on an 11 by 14. And they are both enlarged to the same amount, exactly the same amount. I haven't moved the enlarger at all since last week's filming. And it's a very nice print. You can see that glow I was talking about. Um, it's definitely punchier. The D76 is very pleasant. I like this print. It's soft. And that's something D76 stock solution does bring, this lovely softness to the image. And this is punchier even though it was stock solution it's definitely punchier and it's sharper there are sharper lines around these petals the d76 is perfectly sharp enough if you are a d76 user you probably would not want to change to this developer because there isn't enough of a difference unless you're looking for that glow which could be the difference that you're looking for in your prints but it's very nice the little guys are lovely and sharp inside. Um, as I said on the scan, the sharpness of the wings of the little guys, which is very hard to capture for the film, because after all, they're translucent. But it's just about the same. They're, they're very pleasant, very well rendered by this negative. HP5 35mm negative, shot with my Pentax MX, 
with the 50mm 1.7 lens at 5.6 so it's really in its sweet spot so they're both very nice images I like this one I like this glow I've always liked the Rodinal glow and this is something towards that I've been looking at this image and I like the image a lot but is the difference enough from D76 to MQ Borax? I'm not sure if you're a D76 user, if you could be bothered to change to this developer. So I think next week we should look at how Ilford tried to raise the bar and what they did to change and improve upon D76. Till then, bye for now.